my head is sort of thinking at the, at the moment about two two different ways of keeping lactate down. And I'm, I'm sort of wondering if you've been able to elucidate this from your research looking at elite athletes or looking at zone two training interventions. Is it that elite athletes have a greater capacity to clear lactate or are they just producing less lactate because they're better at oxidizing fats? Mm -hmm. That's a great question also. So, and it's been demonstrated uh, by different researchers and among them, uh, George Brooks, that um, um, the feeder an athlete is or a person is, uh, in fact, they produce more lactate, uh, mainly because in the same manner that their mitochondrial function is, is more robust and more efficient, their glycolytic system, which I also call in a colloquial terms, the turbo right? The turbo, it also works better, right? Uh, and in fact, we looked at lactate as a sign of high glycolytic function, uh, which is key for performance, right? So those athletes with very high lactate levels at very high intensity levels, they're really good uh, at the turbo, right? So they produce a lot of lactate because they use a lot of glucose for energy system. Uh, like uh, some athletes can oxidize six, seven grams per Per minute at those intensities where very good athletes uh, or the top ones can oxidize seven or eight, right? But the, 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 the side effect of that is they're going to be producing a lot of lactate, right? But the virtue they have because they have a very robust mitochondrial function is that they clear that lactate from the uh, fast twitch muscle fibers, which is where lactate is produced. They clear it in the adjacent slow twitch muscle fibers and in mitochondria of slow twitch muscle fibers. And for that, you need transporters also. So you need two doors, <clears throat> two transporters, MCT4s and MCT1s. So MCT4s are the doors that take lactate out of the fast twitch muscle fibers. And you need to stimulate that intensity training, uh, not just to improve the turbo, the glycolytic capacity, but to improve the uh, capacity of that door to shuttle lactate out, right? And then the slow twitch muscle fibers, when you stimulate those, you, as I we are be mentioning, not only improve or, or stimulate mitochondrial function, because that's where they're the most present, because uh, fast twitch muscle fibers cannot burn fat much, so the mitochondrial uh, uh, content is much less. But also the MCT1s are present in those slow twitch muscle fibers, so you stimulate those as well. So that that's how kind of in a nutshell, like uh, the lactate shuttle that was discovered by George Brooks in the 80s already works. Let me throw that back to you and, and see if I've heard all of that correctly. So lactate clearance can be improved or is a product of our ability to get lactate out of these fast twitch muscle fibers which are going to be activated and utilized at higher intensities, I'm thinking sprinting or resistance training, for example. And, and so that stimulus is going to help increase the number of the MCT4 transporter. You mentioned that helps get lactate out of those muscle fibers or muscle cells, we could call them. And then the lower intensity work, so zone two, which is mostly stimulating the slow twitch, slow to fatigue muscle fibers, muscle cells is acting in a way to increase the MCT1 transporter in those cells. So you get this sort of nice push-pull, I guess, lactate clearance system where if you're doing the right uh, training sort of modalities or intense training at the right intensities, have the right stimulus in place, Exactly. You can you can get the lactate out of the fast twitch muscle fibers, get it back into the slow twitch muscle fibers, which keeps lactate levels down, and also acts as an energy substrate. Exactly, absolutely, and and th this is why I yeah the way I see training or exercise prescription is that right? It's like a, from a bioenergetic standpoint, and as I always say, which energy system you want to stimulate today, right? So that, that's where it's partitioning of, 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 of cellular bioenergetics through, through exercise. 
And we're talking about two completely different systems, the glycolytic system and the oxidative phosphorylation system, the lactate channeling system out of the cells and the lactate receiving um, uh, cells, right? Uh, the, the type one muscle fibers and everything is different intensities of exercise are going to elicit different adaptations and different responses. So therefore different adaptations, but we all are talking that all this happens within an aerobic world, right? So still everything that we're talking about here is aerobic, right? So uh, you can produce plenty of lactate under aerobic conditions. So again, it's just that, that, that that's how it's important when you prescribe exercise, whether it's for an athlete or for a fitness enthusiast or for, for longevity purposes or for patients uh, to really identify training zones because whatever you exercise, the intensity that you exercise is going to stimulate one pathway significantly more than the other, right? So yeah, you want to really target and want to know what you want to do. Do you want to improve your glycolytic capacity, your turbo? Because you're very good at... Um, Let's say you're you're very diesel. You're very good at uh, uh, very efficient at metabolizing fats and lactate in mitochondria, but you're not good at at high intensity. You know, uh, so you need to stimulate that by identifying your weakness. Uh, but for health purposes, that that's more maybe for performance. But although we lose like like a little capacity of, of, as we age, and we we want to kind of maintain some of that or or a big part of that. But uh, for health purposes, the main problem that happens as we age for longevity purposes is a mitochondrial decay. As we don't exercise as much as when we were kids, it's a mitochondrial decay. And uh, again, what, what I've seen in my experience for almost 30 years is that that zone two is the one that improves mitochondrial function the most. And that's because it's targeting mostly the sl slow twitch muscle fibers where most mitochondria are found? Yeah, that's how I see it. And and, 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 and again, like the way I, I see is through fat, and carbon, fat oxidation in laboratory as lactate cleans capacity. That's the, the area well, for me, uh, or at least from my experience is without a doubt, and, and many others, you know, they, they've been telling me this. Uh, this is where we see that this is where you improve the most, right? Uh, we might be wrong, and maybe in 20 years, 30 years, we might be talking about their different methodologies of training or different understanding. Sure, of course, right? Uh, things evolve, but uh, uh, that, that's that's my my experience that has been been working very successfully with elite athletes, with some of the best athletes in the world, uh, as well as uh, at a clinical level. I've had a very good experiences with people with chronic diseases when it comes to exercise prescription. I want to get into all of the practical elements of, of zone two and we can perhaps kind of further define it. But just quickly to close off on this conversation about lactate clearance on the MCT4 side of things and the stimulus to, um, to activate the fast twitch muscle fibers and increase MCT4 so you're better at clearing lactate from those muscle cells. Are we talking about zone four? slash zone five training here exactly yeah this is where you you have to stimulate the the, the, the turbo right that glycolytic capacity right so uh that that's where you improve uh not only just the glycolytic pathway the whole glycolysis right which is faster and more efficient right therefore the turbo right but you also improve those mct ones because i mean lactate is the mandatory obligatory byproduct of glucose utilization the more glucose you use, the more lactate you produce. So that's where like a, when you stimulate that energy system, you're going to use a lot of glucose and you're going to produce a lot of lactate. And that lactate has to be shuttled out of that fast twitch cell. And, and the way it does is through the MCT fours um, and it's shuttled into the adjacent cell. And as long as the, and this is why it's very important. I always say that for, for performance, right? For those athletes, you know, you win the races or, or the competitions in the high uh, intensity levels, obviously, right? But because you produce so much lactate, you, you really need, need, you depend on, on that mitochondria of the slow twitch muscle fibers because that's where you're going to be shuttling the lactate into for lactate cleanse capacity as well as for fuel, right? Uh, and so that the turbo keeps working better and better and better, right? And this is what we see 
that at, at, at a, as, as an athlete increases performance, let's say at 350 watts, which for more models, it's almost impossible even to turn the pedals. At 350 watts, uh, an athlete today might have a blood lactate of, of, of 8 millimoles and maybe in one year specifically working to improve uh, lactic cleanse capacity, that lactate from 8 millimoles is going to go to uh, 4 millimoles maybe at 350 watts. So that, that athlete can sustain that intensity that before was only sustainable for three minutes or so. Now that athlete can sustain an intensity for 40 minutes, for example, right? So that's absolutely key to performance. And at the same time, for the everyday person, should they do a protocol that lowers their lactate in that way for a given intensity, that again is a window into mitochondrial function, which which speaks to their metabolic health and risk of cardiometabolic disease. So there's a benefit up for grabs here for the athlete that's looking to race better, but also for the everyday person who's just looking to sort of live better for longer. Now, I think yeah. this is really, really helpful, Inigo, in terms of in my undergraduate, I remember one of my lecturers is sort of just bolding and underlining this statement of structure reflects function and yeah. spe- speaking to the importance of you know, specific stimuli to create a very specific adaptation. So I think you've stepped us through really, really nicely the different stimulus that is kind of zone two training, which is mostly targeting slow twitch muscle fibers, zone five or zone four or five, the fast twitch muscle fibers, but the way that these can kind of work together to improve metabolic health and performance. A lot of people speak about an 80-20 split, 80% of time in zone two, 20% of time at zone four or five high intensity work. and, And that's commonly something said i guess within the endurance community is that is that a kind of rule or protocol that you also recommend both for an athlete and also for the everyday person just looking to improve their metabolic function yeah i mean that, that's part of the polarized training um that uh it's 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 been trending right for 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 a while and i i embrace it i particularly embrace it because this is actually what we do um uh, with athletes, um, if you look at, and this is counterintuitive, right? And uh, um, but if you look at the uh, percentage of a workload of an athlete throughout an entire year, it doesn't matter if that athlete is a uh, uh, like a like a marathon runner, right? Or or, or a triathlete or a uh, cyclist who's more pure endurance, or that athlete is a swimmer, right? Or a rower, which is really high intensity. Uh, the immense majority of the entire workload of that athlete throughout the year is in the lower intensities, more in the zone two, in the zone one, right? Uh, and a very small percentage is in the very high intensities, right? And this is something that we can see this very well nowadays. Uh, we have all these platforms where we capture the information, right? Uh, where we see this in these individual athletes, team sports, are a little bit different because uh, it's it's high intensity all the time mixed with lower intensity. But in the individual sports, we see this all the time, and uh, um, and uh, yeah, so that works. That that works, and 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 it also is necessary because if if the the conception that many people still have that elite athletes they train hard and intervals and uh, intervals and hard all the time, uh, that's not sustainable. That's not sustainable, and in fact. We really are careful with athletes with, when we prescribe intervals because, um, yeah, it, 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 it can uh, put you in a very dangerous spot for overtraining and, and uh, decrease performance. So we really need to mitigate. It's not sustainable, and, and if you keep pushing for that, you're going to end up overtrained. So that, that, that's where, like, a, a by default, um, uh, and this is, again, this is this has just been – um, evolution of the sport, right? I always say we cannot be so naive to think that the best uh, um, uh, uh, athletes and coaches in the world uh, over decades, they haven't thought about these concepts, right? Of course they have, right? Uh, intuitively, I always say a swimmer, right? It's, uh, let's say a 100 meter swimmer is usually under a minute, right? So it's super high intensity. So intuitively, what, 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 what would a swimmer need? Just do one minute intervals, right? All day. Right. But, uh, when you see swimmers, the elite swimmers, and in Australia, you guys have 
some of the best in the world, right? A uh, great school of swimmers, they're swimming hours and hours and hours and hours, right? Uh, at lower intensities. Uh, well, lower intensities for them, for us, it's unsustainable, right? Because that's the other thing we haven't talked about, the... Um, the, 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 the what's low intensity for an athlete and what's what's low intensity for a mer mortal, right? But for them, relatively speaking, it's a lower intensity, right? And this is what, what that's why they can sustain hours and hours and hours. But uh, uh, yeah, but it's counterintuitive. I understand, I know, but that that's the way it's been the evolution of, of sports. I am absolutely excited to share an exclusive offer with the Proof community. This is a limited time offer just for my audience and no doctor referral is needed. Function Health is a comprehensive at-home blood testing service that gives you access to over 100 biomarkers, covering everything from heart, liver, kidney, and metabolic health to hormone levels, inflammation, and nutrient status. That, my friends, is five times more testing than the average physical. I chose Function for my own blood work and to be a sponsor of this show because they are the best in the world when it comes to helping you understand and own your health. It's true, the depth and quality of their testing is unrivaled. And as regular listeners of this show will know, you cannot optimize what you don't measure. Don't guess, test. Use Function to know exactly where your health is today, and then intervene with evidence-based medicine and lifestyle changes to feel your best and reduce your risk of chronic disease. With Function, you get access to very important markers like LP little a, a genetically driven cardiovascular risk factor, APOB, the most predictive marker of atherosclerosis, and LH and FSH, reproductive hormones typically missing from standard lab panels. It's not uncommon for these biomarkers and others to be elevated. For example, over 50% of Function members have an APOB level, and over 20% have an LPA little level that is above the optimal range. You can even add on harder to access tests like cystatin C, a very sensitive marker of kidney function, as well as selenium and iodine nutrients that are essential for thyroid and overall health, yet rarely tested. So what are you waiting for? Run over to functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill today and be one of 1000 listeners to score a $100 credit. That's functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill.